Okay, gang. I got the second round of primer on the Mustang, and it looks really, really good. So what I'm going to do is mock up the doors. Now, in earlier videos, I talked about the, you trying to use the old doors and maybe reskinning them. But after really looking them over, the bottoms were so rotted out, it wasn't worth messing with. Along with that, same way with the hinges. The hinges were all wobbly and loose. So I bought new hinges. And as you can see, I've already put them up there. Now, there's some blue paint behind the hinges. That's not the color of the car. Um, I just had some paint, and I wanted to put, them, put the paint on there because once I get these hinges located, I'm probably not taking them back off. And um, just want to have some paint behind it on top of the primer. So what I did is I sandblasted the uh, original bolts for the hinges and painted them. You know, now this will have some top coat blue later on. Um, and as I was getting ready to mount the door, and here's the new doors. I got two of them uh, from Mustangs Unlimited. I ran into a problem because the original bolts, which have a 916 head and uh, 3 8 uh, threads, won't fit. So they use a smaller um, thread in the plate. So I picked up some grade 5 5 16 coarse, coarse thread, about the same length, and I'm going to have to add a lock washer and a flat washer. Um, Nothing else I can do. I don't have any of the star uh, type of bolts like I had originally. But what I, what I wanted to show you was these uh, hinges. The lower one has three bolts and the top one has three bolts. And there's a little metal plate that rides inside the A-pillar. And that little metal plate will fall down pretty easily. But when the car is open, there's no dash and all that. You can get in there pretty easily and put it in place with your hands. Um, and these are not tight. I mean, they still move. And what I'm going to do is mount the door and then work on uh, creating the reveal. And once I get everything in place and adjust the way I want it, then I'll, I'll start tightening things up. But um, just kind of give you an overview of, of what I'm doing with the, uh, with the doors right now. Okay, I wanted to show you a couple things. Um, now obviously these doors aren't that heavy and doing it by yourself is a little tricky. I've done this quite a few times, so I'm comfortable doing it by myself. If you have some help, that's even better. Um, what I have seen people do, and I've done in the past, depending on the weight of the door, is take just a, an old standard floor jack, and on the base, take a piece of wood and uh, or a, a towel or something like that, and put on the bottom of the or set the door on top of that, and jack it up and try to balance it. It's still a little tricky, um, but it helps if you have two people. The one problem I had was the uh, bolt the plate where the bolts go in um, they didn't want to line up very well they could, they kind of sat low in the opening so what I did is I took uh, basically a piece of all thread and I threaded it in and and used that as a guide to get it on the um, hinge and then start the second bolt down below once I have that one in I can support the door with that and work my way down to these other ones so just wanted to show you that um, sometimes the, the bolts or the plates will line up really nice but in this case the plates like I said they were a little bit low so there's no way I could have started a bolt and that's why I put that up there I wanted to show you a few things while I'm working on this um, you can see the gap is pretty big at the back edge of the door now I, when I had done these quarters I originally fitted them to the original doors and the original hinges which shouldn't be a big deal but there's always going to be variables in the aftermarket stuff so I've already adjusted taking those three bolts loose those three bolts loose and tried to move the door back or aft and I'm out of room there's not gonna, they're not going to move any further at least not the top hinge so I'm going to have to get creative and I'm probably going to have to take the hinge back off and take these three holes and oblong them now I want it to go that way, so I'm going to have to lengthen the holes that way, and that will give me more room to move it aft. hope that makes sense to you. Otherwise, it's lining up pretty good, but one of the things that gives it away as to alignment too is this corner down here. That corner should be right on this corner, pretty much. I mean, because your fender, when it comes in and, and bolts on, is going to match all that. So that's 
kind of a giveaway as to how it should look. But I think uh, at this point, if I play with this hinge and do what I was saying about oblonging the holes, I'll be able to move the door aft and it'll correct that corner down there and also make the fender fit better. Well, I pulled the hinge off. I have the door supported. I have a, a fender mat, a piece of cardboard, and a bungee cord up there holding it in place. Um, when I pulled the hinge off, I noticed that the backing plate or the mounting plate, that's all the way aft. It won't go any further. So that's why I'm running out of room as well as it's hitting the edge of the inner structure for the uh, main, main post. So even if I had some room, it wouldn't go. The, um, the plate itself is bottomed out going that way. So definitely have to do some adjustment on the hinges and make up for it. So I mounted up the hinge on, in my vise, and you can see I elongated that upper hole, and all I used was what I call a rotary file. Uh, machinists call them burrs, and I just stuck it in my straight grinder that I picked up from Harbor Freight. Nice, cheap little grinder. But, uh, you know, just be careful doing that. Shape out the hole. I'll move on and get this one, and then the third one, and that should take care of the hinge problem. Well, I'm much happier with it now. And um, I just wanted to point out some things. You know, there's there's two bolts up here on the top, and there's three bolts here on the bottom in the door itself. Those will allow you to move the door in and out a little bit, and even this way a little bit. These up here, these three, and these three down here, will allow the door to move this way, this way, this way it all depends on how you what room you have for adjustment and you just have to think about what it does because you're on this flat plane here so you can't go in and out you can go up and down back and forth and kind of oscillate um, same way with these this is your plane so you have to have function within that plane so I've got the door lined up and I, I know it's hard to see um, and it that, does, that angle doesn't help there, but it, it lines up really close. And the reveal combination of the gap on the back edge of the door and the gap at the bottom of the door look pretty good. Um, I know this, I have this gasket or this uh, fender apron in the way, but it lines up pretty nice. Now, the only difficulty with doing these when you get to this point is there's no glass in it, no hardware. So sometimes it's best if you actually preload the door up just a little tiny bit because when you put all that extra weight in there, it's going to want to come down. So it's just it's not something you learn or do automatically and it uh, takes, you know, years of knowing uh, kind of what the end result is going to be when you add that extra weight. But just wanted to show you that door and uh, how things go and sometimes you got to make some adjustments and uh, do some modifications.